Complete the following table where each row shows a single integer value represented as a normal decimal number, a 6-bit unsigned binary number, a 6-bit signed binary number, and a 2-digit unsigned hexadecimal number. Fill in each blank unshaded entry. Write NA if a value cannot be represented in some column. Okay, so we don't need to fill in shaded blanks like this one. And we have a single value in each row. So it's the same value everywhere. Uh, it's only going to look normal to us in the first column here where we've got the decimal representations like negative 15 and 87 and 250. But whatever this is as a decimal, it's, it's the same value. It just happens to be represented as a 6-bit signed number. So we're going to deal with 6-bit unsigned numbers. That's going to be a binary number with 6 bits. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 blanks. And it's a binary number, so we've got a 1's place and a 2's place because it's base 2. And then 2 times 2 is 4, 2 times 4 is 8, 2 times 8 is 16, and 2 times 16 is 32. And it's unsigned, meaning we're only going to get non-negative numbers. And we've got a 6-bit signed binary number. That's going to use the same number of blanks. But if this first bit is a 1, then it's actually a negative number. And we'll flip the bits and add 1. We'll take the 2's complement in order to find out how large that negative number is. So we'll get its magnitude by doing that. Uh, which means we're not actually going to be able to represent positive 32, because to represent positive numbers, we'll need to have a 0 here. So the biggest we're going to be able to get to is 31, which would be 1's all along here. OK, and a two-digit unsigned hexadecimal number. So that's going to be two digits. And hexadecimal is base 16. So we're going to have a 1's place and a 16's place. And in order to fit a number like 15 into that blank, we're going to have to use letters too. So we'll have 1, 2, 3, and all the way up to 9. But then we're going to have A, B, C, D, E, and F. And those are 10, 11, 12, 13. 14 and 15. Okay, I think we're all set. So let's represent negative 15. That is a negative number, and this is an unsigned 6-bit number, so we're not going to be able to represent it here. So that's a nice, easy start. Okay, as a 6-bit signed number, well, we know it's negative, so we know we're going to eventually want a 1 in this first blank to say that it's a negative number. But right now, what we need to do is figure out how to represent its magnitude, so the absolute value of negative 15, which is 15. So how do we represent 15 as a signed binary number? Well, uh, it doesn't have a 32, it doesn't have a 16, but it does have an 8. So let's make some room here and subtract out that 8. And we'll put a 1 in here to say that we've got that. 7, and 7 does have a 4 in it, so we'll take out that 4. 3 does have a 2 in it, so we'll take out that 2. And 1 obviously has a 1 in it, and that finishes up our number. And, and that shouldn't be a surprise. 1, 1, 1, 1, that should be 1 less than 16. So this is the unsigned version. It's, well, it's the absolute value. It's not negative 15, but it is the magnitude of negative 15. We're going to want to flip the bits. 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, and then add 1. And that's the 2's complement of this positive number here, which gives us our negative number. And so our 6-bit sign value is 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. OK. Let's clear out our table just a little. And next up, we've got 87. We want to convert that to a 6-bit unsigned number. So let's clear space for our conversion to 6-bit unsigned binary number. Um, hmm. Well, 87 definitely has a 32 in it. But the reason I'm pausing here is because the next blank, if we had a next blank, which we don't, let's just draw this like a like a dashed line or something to say, we don't really have this. Do, 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 do. OK. But if we did, and we put a 1 here, that would be a 64. And that's going to be one larger than the largest number we could represent with all 1s in these other blanks. We'd get one less than 64. So this number right here, the largest number we can represent with 6 bits, is 64 minus 1 and 63. 
that's that's 2 to the 6 minus 1 that's the formula that we worked out so 2 to the 6 is 64 and 64 minus 1 is 63 and that is smaller than 87 so in fact we can't represent this uh, if we had 7 bits by the way we would just say oh well we've got a 64 and 87 minus 64 is 23 so no 32 in that it's too small uh, but we do have a 16 uh, 23 minus 16 is 7 so no 8 in that and it is 1 less than 8 so this is going to end up being 1 1 1 but let's just do it step by step 7 minus 4 is 3 I shouldn't really have equal equal here should I this is this is this quantity over here is certainly not equal to this one but it's just our scratch work so 3 minus 2 because there is a 2 in 3 that gets us 1 and then we've got a 1 here so this is our unsigned binary number that represents 87 uh, but it's 7 bits long so we can't represent it and uh, if it's too large to be represented with a 6-bit unsigned binary number, it is definitely too large to be represented with a 6-bit signed binary number because we've given up uh, effectively half of our positive numbers in our 6-bit unsigned binary number in order to be able to represent negative numbers in a 6-bit signed binary number. So we can't even represent um, 32, for example, uh, positive 32 in a 6-bit signed binary number. The largest we could do is 31. So that's going to be an NA as well. Oh, you know what? I shouldn't, I shouldn't get rid of that. Let's undo that, because we still have to do hexadecimal, don't we? So this will be NA. But it's super handy to have this binary for hexadecimal, because once you've got something in binary, it is very easy to convert it to hexadecimal. We just group it into four big groups, and we'll just fill in this side with a zero, so it's a four big group. And then, well, we already know this is seven, one, one, one. And this... If this is the ones place, and this is the twos place, and this is the fours place, then that's four plus one is five. So this is five, seven. And we could check that. Uh, five times 16 is 80. Just happen to have that memorized. Um, 80 plus seven is 87. So that's good. OK. So let's clear our space again, because we'll probably need it. Clear out all of these addition and subtraction problems. Okay. And oh, let's clear out this 64. Uh, it was good to know what the largest number we could represent was, but we don't want to get confused and fill in too many blanks. There we go. Okay. So 250 is our next value. That's way larger than 87, so this is going to be an NA. Again, we may never actually fill in a 6 bit unsigned binary number. We'll see. Uh, we don't have to do the signed version, uh, and that's okay. It would obviously be NA for the same reason as above, uh, but we do need to fill in the unsigned hexadecimal version. Oh, so we could we could put more blanks in here, 64 and 128, and we could say, oh, well, 250 has one 128 in it, so 250 minus 128 is, and fill in the blank, and then it, uh, the result will have maybe a 64 in it, and so on and so forth. But I happen to know that the largest number we can represent in 8 bits, and, and this would be 8 bits, so now I'm going to have my dotted line again, right? This would be 8 bits. We don't have 8 bits in these two columns. But we do in this one. A hexadecimal digit is equivalent to 4 bits, so 2 is equivalent to 8 bits. Um, the largest value we could represent would be 1 less than what we could represent with just a 1 in the next place. So it's 255. So this is only a little bit less than the largest value. So we can just count down. The, the largest value would be f, f, the largest uh, digit in each place. So FF is 255. It's one less than 256. So FF is 255. FE is 254, 253, 252, 251, 250. So FA should be 250. Now let's just check that. So FA, FA. Uh, A is 10, so we've got 10 in the ones place. That's easy enough. F is 15, 
So we've got 15 in the 16's place, which requires us to do some longhand math. 5 times 6 is 30. 5 times 1 is 5, plus 3 is 8. Hey, there's 5 times 16 again. I should have known that right off. Oh, well, whatever. Uh, 1 times 16 is 16. And that'll be 0. And 8 plus 6 is 14. And 240. So 240 plus 10 is 250. Great. OK. So let's at least clear out this space. Maybe we can leave the rest of it. OK, so next up, we don't have the number in decimal. Instead, we've got the number as a 6-bit signed binary number. And it does start with a 1. So it is going to be a negative number. But if this had been a 0 at the start, let's just make it a 0 for a moment. If this had been a 0 at the start, then this would be a positive number. It doesn't matter that the representation is signed. That doesn't mean the number is negative. It just means it can be negative. Uh, but if it does start with a 1, then it is negative. So let's just uh, copy that number down here. 1, 1, 0, 1. 0, 1. We know it's negative, uh, so in order to find out how big it is, we're going to flip the bits. 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0. And we're going to add 1. So this is the magnitude of the number. So we don't really need this bit pattern anymore. We just need to find out what is the magnitude of this number. So we've got a 1 in the 1s place, we've got a 1 in the 4's place, and we've got a 1 in the 16's place. That's 16 plus 4, which is 20, plus 1 is 21. So this is decimal 21, and that's the magnitude. The sign is negative. Don't forget that. So it is negative 21. OK, now what about a two-digit unsigned hexadecimal number? Uh, well, we can convert to hexadecimal by just grouping bits. So we'd have four bits here, and we'd have four bits here. Now, if we are filling in bits on a signed binary number, uh, we wouldn't fill in with zeros here, because this number is supposed to be negative. And if we fill in with zeros, we end up with a number that looks like it's positive. So we would actually fill in those places to get to an 8-bit signed number with ones. And this is a signed number. Oh, OK. Trick question. This is a signed number. This is an unsigned number, so we're actually, this is going to be NA. We can't represent this. But let's just pretend for a moment that it's signed, because this is a good problem. We can finish the problem. Uh, and we can translate this to a hexadecimal number. Um, so it shouldn't be too hard. We just have to find out what these values are, and then look them up in the table. So we've got, uh, it's a little hard to see in that gray area, I'm sorry, 1s, 2s, 4s, and 8s. So we've got 1, 8, 1, 2, and 1, 1. That's 8 plus 2 is 10, plus 1 is 11. 11 is B, so our second digit would be B. And then uh, over here, same thing, 1s, 2s, 4s, 8s. So we've got 8 plus 4 plus 2. Uh, 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14. So that's E. So this would be EB as a signed hexadecimal number. But now let's go back to what the problem actually asked us. Uh, and it wouldn't be EB, it will be NA, because this is stipulated to be an unsigned number. So we finished that row. And let's clear out our reference area here. All right, great. I'm going to just delete that negative 21 so I don't get confused by it. OK, next time we start with hexadecimal, um, so let's just write that hexadecimal in here above our four bit blanks here. So here's our low order four bits, and here's high order four bits. This is just the extra place we put in so we knew what the largest number we could represent with eight bits was. Uh, one is just one, zero, zero, sorry, zero, 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 one. There's a one and nothing else. And A is 10. So if we think of this as the ones, twos, fours, and eights place, then a, t a 10 has an 8 in it. Uh, by the way, right away we can see we're not going to be able to represent this as a 6-bit number because we've got a 1 way out here uh, at the 8th bit, and we only have 6 bits available. So this is going to be an A. We've got one chance left to actually get a 6-bit unsigned binary number. Uh, anyway, so A is 10, and that's got an 8 in it. And 10 minus 8 is 2, so we're also going to have a 1 here. And we're going to have zeros here and here. OK. 
Uh, well, we've already got the binary number. Let's just use it to figure out what the value is. So we've got 1, 128. And we've got 132. So 128 plus 32. 2 plus 8 is 10. 1 plus 2 plus 3 is 6. So that's 160. Uh, plus 1. So plus 1 gives us 161. This is 161. Uh, and let's just check that over here. A 1. So we've got a 1 in the 1's place. Uh, this 10 and 15 isn't relevant anymore. We've got a 1 in the 1's place. And we've got an A in the 16's place. A is 10. So that's 10 16's. And 10 times 16 is 160. 161. Yeah, great. OK. Let's clear our space. A, clear out this one. Same sort of problem. We've got one F, and we want to convert it to an unsigned binary number and a decimal number. So let's put the F up above the lower order bits and the one up above the higher order bits. One, we already did that. Zero, 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 one. Oh, ho, ho, glory be, look. Zero's over here. We are going to be able to represent this as an unsigned 6-bit binary number. So f, uh, f is the largest value we can fit in 4 bits, so it's going to be all 1s. We can double check that, but it'll come out that way. 8 plus 4 is 12, plus 2 is 14, plus 1 is 15. So that's our bit pattern. 0, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. And as a decimal number, well, this looks easier to do this way. So f is 15, so we're going to have 15 in the 1s place. And well, 1 is just 1, so we're going to have 1 in the 16th place. So that is 16 plus 15. Uh, 31. Okay, one more row to go, and let's clear our spaces. Okay, uh, 010, 110. Zero, one, zero, one, one, zero. So 010, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero. As a 6-bit signed binary number. Well, if this started with 1, if this number started with 1 here, so if we change that to a 1, this is an unsigned number. So this is positive. But if we just copy this bit pattern over here, we'll get a negative number. So if this started with 1, we'd just have to say NA over here. It would be too big to represent as a 6-bit signed binary number. But it doesn't. It starts with 0. So we want it to be positive over here. So we're still going to start it with 0. Uh, and we're just going to copy the bits over. 0, 1, 0, 1, 1, 0. Great. OK, now, as a hexadecimal number, uh, we've already got a, it broken up into four big groups here. So uh, we can fill out with zeros. And these four bits, 0, 0, 0, 1, that's just 1. And 0, 1, 1, 0, uh, 4 plus 2 is 6. So that's 6. So that is 1, 6. I can't resist knowing what the decimal value is, because it seems weird not to know. So that's a 1 in the 16's place is 16, and a 6 in the 1's place is 6. So 16 plus 6 is 22. So this is 22 decimal. OK, we've done it.